Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Over the past several videos, we've been discussing NVIDIA a lot simply because of the number of leaks for RTX 40. But we all know that AMD are waiting in the wings with RDNA 3. So we're going to start this video out with some exclusive information I have regarding the RX 7000 series proposed list of SKUs and some other bits and pieces concerning specifications and performance. Then we're going to move on to some other very intriguing topics. And we're going to get right into it after, of course, this message from the video sponsor. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Crypto.com. Crypto.com is a centralized exchange where you can buy and sell 250 plus cryptocurrencies with 0% fee crypto trading. They also offer a crypto visa debit card, which allows up to 5% cash back on purchases and other nice perks like having access to airport lounges, access to Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify, and more, as well as all of the buying and selling features where you can buy at true cost. Crypto.com also offers services like trading and staking to earn additional revenue on your investments. You can also grow your portfolio by receiving rewards up to 14.5% on your crypto assets. Join 50 million plus users buying and selling 250 plus cryptocurrencies using our referral link, crypto.com slash app slash redgamingtech, which you can also find linked in the video description below. Right guys, let's just get right on with the list of proposed specifications for the very various SKUs in the RX 7000 series for desktop. So far, I've had one source confirm that this is almost certainly the case, although, of course, these specifications could change prior to launch, but so far, these are what AMD allegedly are planning. Uh, I've also heard a couple of other sources tell me that essentially, yep, they look right. Worth noting for Narve 31 in particular, I'm expecting a lot more information to become readily available in the next two to three weeks, and I'll discuss more why uh, as we get further into the video. So let's just quickly go over this. So the top end SKU, and of course the names are subject to change, will be the RX 7975 XT. 96 compute units, 48 workgroup processors. This, of course, is the full implementation. 384-bit bus with 24 gigabytes of memory. And then slightly cut down is going to be 88 compute units or 44 workgroup processors. I'm actually not 100% certain on the workgroup uh, processor count. I was actually given two different numbers. One was 88 and one was 92. But I'm putting the lower number here just for clarity's sake. 384-bit bus still with 20 24 gigabytes of memory. I'm not going to go through all of the specs because, well, you can see them on screen yourself. But for Narve 32, the highest end is going to be the 7800 XT with 64 compute units, 256 bit bus with 16 gigabytes of memory. I now want to scroll down a little bit to the 7600 XT. So for Narve 33, you'll see that the highest end SKU is only 8 gigabytes of memory. I have heard that 16 gigabytes will be available for N33, but critically, this is not going to be for the gaming cards. Now, this information is actually very similar, of course, to the info that I've been putting out for a while now regarding the top end specification of all of the different SKUs. And this brings me to some other intriguing information for the various GPUs. And I really want to talk about the Infinity Cache because Quite frankly, the amount of cash on each of the different variants has been the subject of much discussion, including uh, some rumors even of Vcash, and I want to discuss it a little more here. So basically, one of my sources told me that Narve 31, for example, features 384 megabytes of Infinity Cache, but Source 2 then stated it's 192 megabytes. As a general rule of thumb, each SKU has half the amount of Infinity Cache as bus width. So, for example, 384 bit bus equals 192 megabytes of Infinity Cache. I would personally say at the moment, I'm not really settled on either figure. I've heard really compelling arguments for both, and I've actually been told that both variants have been tested, so what's not clear at the moment is what's actually been launched. So as for the Vcash thing, well, that becomes even more complicated. I have had one source tell me that they think it has at the very least been considered or tested internally for Narve 31, but they think it's more likely it could be either for data center stuff 
or for RDNA4 later down the line. Basically, they're saying just don't hold your breath. I'm honestly not certain about the Vcash situation. If you're unfamiliar with it, just really briefly, I've gone into it in much more detail previously. I believe it was Grayman who initially told this rumor, but I could be wrong on that. But basically what um, I was told initially by one source is that Grayman's probably right, but since then, the second source has said that they're not too certain about it. Uh, but basically the rumor was that the MCDs, which operate as both the Infinity Cache as well as the memory controllers for Navi 31 and 32, essentially contain the ability via TSVs through silicon wires to basically connect to, well, if, um, additional cache. So you can basically think of it as working pretty much the same as the Ryzen V caches. Um, I was told that we're going to know a lot more in the next couple of weeks, particularly when eventually, of course, photos of the card and the uh, MCDs and stuff like that start to leak. We can probably start to get a better understanding of what's actually possible. I'm very curious as well to see the block diagrams for Nave 31 in particular, uh, as we still have a number of underlying questions for the GPUs. Just in general, I don't mean something even specific, but there's just so many things at the moment I'm very curious about and AMD's decisions across the board. I also want to go over some just general stuff. Now, for performance targets, I'm not going to really mention them here because we've discussed them so many times. I personally think that at this stage, Nave 31 is at least two times faster than 21. I personally think it's faster in raster performance, but probably not as fast as RTX 40 in ray tracing performance. But honestly, we're just going to have to wait and see on in terms of performance targets. I think it's too early to exactly know what's going to be faster out of RTX 40 and RDNA 3 anyway, because it's not like we're comparing final silicon and final drivers against, well, one another. And as I've mentioned in a couple of previous videos, I really suspect that AMD and NVIDIA are going to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, encouraging reviewers to test in specific manners um, across their different products. And this is not new. There's generally review guides, but I suspect that obviously each review guide is going to be very stringently kind of geared towards getting the best out of that specific uh, GPU. And I think there's going to be a lot of discussion of like, how do you test the GPU? And I don't just mean like, is it 1080p, 1440p, and do you count minimum frame rates as well as averages? I mean things like, how are you going to test it with like DLSS? Are we going to test it with FSR2 as well as DLSS? What about ray tracing? You know, there's going to be a lot of different optimization and it's also going to be quite interesting. And I don't honestly know if it's going to make any difference in the world, guys. But I also wonder about things like, you know, resizable bar or SAM or whatever you want to call it and different um pcie speeds as well for example three times four times you get the idea i just think that there's going to be a lot of a lot of interest and in also things like you know overclocking um and how you know let's say you can optimize uh, voltage frequency curve i think there's just going to be a lot of stuff with the next generation gpu launches bottom line Anyway, uh, moving on, RDNA 3's launch window, I'm being told thus far, is mid-October to November. This is N33, uh, sorry, N31 first. I'd also heard that Q4 would be the target of N33, with N33 Mobile appearing at CES next year. I'm still digging on this, but it's possible that N33 has been delayed. I'm not sure. RDNA 3 also has some radical changes to the geometry system, so things like mesh shading should see improved performance. The underlying architecture basically has done away with a lot of the legacy GCN holdovers. As another interesting thing, I'm told that the clock frequency of RDNA 3 is going to be pretty rapid. It's most likely going to be 3 GHz to 3.2 GHz, although I'm uncertain whether that's game or boost clocks. And this is actually even more confusing because there seems to be two TDP figures for Nave 31. One is 375 and the other is 450 watts. Now, it seems that the 450 is the AIB custom models and NVIDIA seem to be doing the same thing for the RTX 4090. You may recall that news I put out a few days ago. 
Um, in fact, AMD seem to have settled on this first. I've been reporting those two figures for a while now, so it's possible, for example, that the 3.2 gigahertz figure is the clock frequency of the 450 watt board, but honestly, I don't know. What I have been told is certain SKUs for RDNA 3 seem to overclock just absolutely ridiculously, and RDNA 4 allegedly goes even higher. As for RDNA 4, just a very quick thing for RDNA 4 and Zen 5. At this stage, the design is pretty much locked in for both in terms of performance targets and stuff. Now, whether they hit those performance targets when, you know, silicon starts to actually become ready for, you know, engineering samples, qualification samples, mass production, all that stuff, who knows? But at this stage, anyway, the performance targets, the basic specifications have been essentially decided for zen 5 as well as again rdna 4 so that's a topic for a different time but um you know i'm sure it won't be too long <laughs> until we start talking about that as well now i want to move away from rdna 3 to some intriguing stuff that videocards.com have discovered on amd's own official website long story short they have actually leaked a list of ryzen 7000 series SKUs. i'm not going to spend too long on this of course i will also link the article in the video description however uh, it basically just reinforces information we've already known. Long story short, there is going to be the Ryzen 9 7950X, the 7900X, the Ryzen 7 7700X, and finally, the 7600X, which is, of course, a Ryzen 5 model. Now, again, this was on AMD's own official kind of website. Now, what's not known at this stage is what the release schedule is for these various SKUs, whether, for example, the Ryzen 9s are going to launch first, and then we're going to see, say, the Ryzen 5s, or whether it's all going to be a simultaneous launch. There's also been a ton of debate regarding the actual release schedule for these products, um, with one rumor stating that it's going to be sometime in August. However, I'm personally hearing it's going to be later, probably sometime in September. Honestly, no one's 100% certain at the moment. There have been so many bloody rumors concerning the release dates of various products. I'm actually going to dig into that in a separate video. Probably tomorrow is the time frame. Ironically enough, we'll talk about release dates of release date of a video, but whatever. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'm going to be talking about that more tomorrow. I'm trying to, at this point, just pin down one or two other little bits of information because I don't want to make like a whole thing. Uh, I want to make that video essentially about whether you should buy now or later because there's been a lot of conflicting information information obviously there was those rumors that rtx 40 at least in my opinion i think this is nonsense but there was those rumors that it's going to be delayed up to a year again i don't think that's true but i want to tackle a lot of this stuff in uh, hopefully a video tomorrow now one thing i am hearing and i'm very much hoping like all of my fingers honestly are crossed here that this is nonsense but i've actually had a source message me and this is actually a little worrying, and it concerns Intel. Now, what I'm about to say, I'm really hoping is wrong. I want to stress, I'm hoping that I'm going to just say that this was a bunch of BS in a couple of days. However, the person who told me this is telling me that they're very reasonably high in confidence. Let's just say that. Now, obviously, I'm not going to say who this individual was, but they have had a pretty decent track record in the past when it comes to both Intel as well as AMD news. Now, again, I'm not going to give any hints to who's told me what, but I'm really hoping that what I'm about to tell you guys is BS. And that is that Intel may well be considering cancelling its gaming GPUs. Now, I want to stress the term discrete gaming GPUs. So as far as I'm understanding it, servers, so for example, data center, you know, AI accelerators, those type of things, those products are still probably going to continue and potentially iGPUs as well. However, the gaming GPUs, for example, you know, are they, you know, well, at the moment, let's face it, the current products are kind of released, but even Battle Mage, of course, at this point, there are rumors that it's been delayed. And you may recall that I actually put out a video just recently that I've been hearing that an Arc Gen 1 refresh is allegedly going to be taking place around December slash CES, most likely launched at CES. And basically, the specifications of this essentially are identical, albeit some improvements in power consumption and potentially clock frequencies going up a little bit, although the, although the refresh seems to be mobile only. 
More recently, though, I've been hearing that Battle Mage is actually facing numerous delays, and a couple of sources have told me about this, and I'm certainly not the only one that's mentioned this. Now, the performance targets for Battle Mage, I've heard everything from around RTX 4090 to not as fast. But let's potentially say that that is true. It's RTX 4090, but they launch, well, way after that. It's not going to be that much longer before RDNA 4 and... RTX 50 rumors start to emerge. Let's just be honest, guys. How long have we been hearing RDNA 3 rumors at this point, right? It kind of feels like I was 10 and we were hearing RDNA 3 rumors at this stage. Now, again, I really do hope that this information on Intel, um, like considering this, is not true because I think we do need another competitor in the market. However, the way it's been described to me is that basically it's just extremely expensive to get involved in discrete gaming GPUs. And we all know that there's a, that there's a lot of different issues. Like, it's not just like, oh, we designed the architecture and it's fine. You obviously have drivers, you have support, you have to worry about constantly optimizing around games. And I've heard from other sources that Intel were earmarking, let's just say a lot of money. Uh, not just in terms of like software optimization and you know all of that stuff but also things like um basically trying to get arc in the hands of gamers like laptops and this obviously obviously goes to things like subsidizing now again i'm at this point putting this information out as it's nice but i'm having low to medium confidence that there could be something here. However, I'm putting this information out because I'm curious to see whether it rattles any cages. If it's true, I'm expecting to see some type of announcement at some point soon. I have also reached out to various other sources and as of the time I'm recording this, I'm waiting to hear something back. Again, I really want to stress, I'm hoping that this is fake, that this is not true. And I'm hoping that I'm going to say, yep, I screwed up there, guys. It's not true. However... Um, it's hard to deny that Intel have not been hitting the targets that they should be. Um, and I say that as someone who really wants Intel to be competitive. Like, I think their CPUs, like, I think Raptor Lake is looking to be very good. I think that they're coming on very well with their 14th generation products. I think that Intel are potentially even going to be quite competitive when they finally launch their products and servers for, for CPUs and so on and so on. The gaming GPUs, they can certainly compete right now in pricing, but it's like, how much can they subsidize? And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we all know, like whether your team NVIDIA, whether your team AMD, or whether your team, I don't give a crap, I just want the best product, which is personally the team I root for. Um, I think we can all agree that RTX 40 Mobile or RDNA 3 Mobile. In fact, I'm even hearing rumors that Narve 32 could be on mobile as well, although I'm not certain how the specs differ compared to its desktop implementation. But let's ignore that. Let's just even say N33. It's going to spank, you know, it's going to spank the current lineup from AMD and NVIDIA quite happily. And of course, this naturally means it's also going to do the same for Intel, which means Intel need to be competitive in pricing. And I don't know how I don't know how that's going to work. Again, I'm really hoping that this information is untrue. I really do. Um, as far as I understand it, this decision is only very, very recent. Um, so I don't even know how much of Intel's own team knows about this yet, or whether it's a decision that has gone super far. So perhaps it's just being considered internally, which is how it was described to me. And I don't think it's been 100% decided. So again, I want to stress, I don't think that this is something they've 100% decided, but they are at the very least considering it. And I'm very much hoping that this is not the case, or they decide to still continue with ARC and its various, you know, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, because I think that we need competition. Um, I've, for a long time, been quite vocal in my support of Intel getting involved in the discrete GPU market for gaming on desktop as well as laptops. I think that as much competition as possible is always good for us as end users. Um, with that said, of course, all we can do is wait and see. Um, with that said, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. It's YouTube, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.